Hi everyone, it's Kylie from Kylie's Cardcraft. Thanks for joining me today. Thought today I'd like to show you some double tag pockets. Now, great for your junk journals. We'll go in lots of other things as well, but they're so easy to make. These are the sorts of things we're talking about. So, we've got a little tag in a tag with another one. Nice and quick and easy to make. Great to use up some of your scraps. Um, let's face it, we've all got oodles of scraps. So I've just, I've done up two to show you different ways, just to prove that I don't always do roses and flowers and all the rest. So I've done my soft romantic one as such. This is all just distressed around the edges to give it that rough older look. This is the sort of style I'll be showing you today. I did a grungy one as well, just to show you. Now this one has faux stitching all the way around and around my tag and around my other little pocket on the front. You'll find how to do the faux stitching in one of my earlier videos, but it's basically for those of us that can't be bothered turning around and going to our sewing machine, or if you don't have a sewing machine and you want that effect without actually having to stitch every layer, then this will give you that same effect. Yep, you can see that it's not actually stitching when you look close, but when you're going through your book, it gives you that look anyway. Now this one, as I said, still tag in a tag. These ones are just chipboard cogs that I've inked up in black ink. I've then, once that's dry, just dabbed a little bit of silver paint on the sides, just with a really um, textured foam brush type thing, just so that it would keep that texture in there. And then I've put a little bit of copper in there as well. My little clock is a stamp. I've stamped him onto some paper, cardstock, just a base. Stuck that onto some chipboard to give it that extra. Cut it out. Once it was all cut out, I then used um, a dimensional magic like uh, Glossy Accents. I use Glossy Accents, which is a Ranger brand. Um, lots of other dimensional magics out there. Can't quite think of any other brands at the moment, but I know there are lots. And what they do is give you this sealed surface, this glossy sealed surface, so that it looks like it's in, in heat embossed or it's got an acrylic over it, but it gives you this lovely, I don't know if the light's picking up the shine on that. Leave it to dry and it goes hard as and a beautiful shiny surface. This one of course has its other little pocket and that's just plain white. And I've stamped that in a stamp that matched these papers. Now again, I've just gone through old paper pads that I've had here, trying desperately to use them up and bits and pieces. My clock I actually made months and months ago, but it worked really well. On this. Both of these completely different, different sizes. And you do these, you can all go out and buy the tags. Now they come in a craft colour, they'll come in this manila, what we call a manila colour, they'll come in black. Um, lots of different companies put them out. And they're very easy to work with pre done. If you're doing lots of tags and you're conscious of going through all your tags, use them as a template. Cut them out out of something else. So this is just a piece of cardstock. It's not that heavy, but it's a little bit heavier than probably the tag to start with. Now I've made this to the size that I want for my next tag. So each one of these are a slightly different size but I've used this as my template. 
So this was the size that I wanted. I just wanted him a little bit wider this time. So using your store-bought tag as a template means that you can keep going and keep going and either thin them down or fatten them up like I've done with this one, lengthen them, whatever else, and you're not always going through your store-bought ones. So what we need with this, sitting back over there, is our base tag, which is a larger one at the end. That will signify your overall finish. What we're going to do is cover him. Now, you can see that this one was done on your standard size tag. This one is a tag that I've made. And you can see the bottom of my faux stitching across there. So this one kind of fits in the middle. So he's about the same size as this one, but he's a little bit wider. What I want, what we're going to do, I'll just sit these ones aside, is to start with, we're just going to cover our base tag and nice and easy, just by sitting him down. So just glue stick, as you know, I use my blue glue so that I can see where I'm going. Straight through. Now, again, just a piece off a paper pad. I really like this section up here. So always look at what you want. I know I'm going to lose this little number up here. But I'm going as much or as little as I can. Move you over so that I get exactly what I'm after. Yep, lovely. He's evened up beautifully. Now, when we cut our tags, make sure he's all nicely pushed down. We can trim them off with our scissors. Of course, in a perfect world, you would wait a little while for that to dry. I'm just going to trim him off with my scissors just to make it nice and quick. Now, last time, one of my other earlier videos, I mentioned taking them off with sandpaper. I had a few comments about that, so I will show you exactly what I mean. And you'll see the difference in the finished. So there's a tag as he's coming along. We just want this bit. So this section I'll take off with my sandpaper. Bend him over, which gives him that crease. You'll notice I was doing it with the others because I'm just so used to that's what I tend to do. Give him a crease. Now, sandpaper, you can buy sheets of sandpaper at local hardware stores. You can. This one's a very old one that was actually put out for craft. I don't even know if these ones are still available anymore, sorry. Um, but what you can get are what they call sanding blocks. And they're a foam inside and they've got sandpaper all the way across. Now, they're available at hardware stores, etc. I know they are in Australia. Um, Bunnings, Mitre 10, things like that. And they're just, they're not take off sandpaper like these ones. They are literally just sandpaper all the way around. It's starting to move over. Um, they work a treat. When they get too worn down, it is chuck it away, get another one. But you've got all four sides with them. So... Sorry for the noise of that, and we'll just fix that one back up. And I'll wipe my finger where I just put it all over my glue stick. Right, so sandpaper, I've bent him over. So I've already got that crease, which means that I've slightly torn the fibres of the paper anyway. And then it's just a matter of taking him down. So I'm going in an angle straight down. I hope you can see that. And you can see that it's already started to tear. What it gives is a really soft finish. So you'll see this is straight as, that's from my scissors. This is a softer edge from my sandpaper. The best thing to use this on is when you're covering something with tissue paper, serviettes, etc. 
it it won't tear it. It just softly smooths it off from the edge and work yeah works really really well on the really fine thin papers all right so there's our basic tag shape move those scissors away i of course ink everything you all know i ink around i've got that lovely section that i wanted down the side and yes i missed my numbers unfortunately it's not the end of the world. It's fine. So I will just go around with my ink. And of course, I'm using brushed corduroy in my little small semicircles. Right. What I've done now is given a soft edge all the way across. So I've got my base going. For me, I want a little bit more going on with this tag. So I'm actually going to stamp a few images in here. Now I've decided I want my tag butterfly, butterfly themed. So I pulled out a few butterfly stamps to start with. And what I want for across the top is, mm, I, know if I want, but I want this section, a little bit of writing, little bit of butterflies. So here's my stamp. It's just a clear stamp. I actually think it was a Kaisercraft stamp. You can see this is the section I want. So I'm, what I'm going to do is have him stamped up there. So back to my stamping mat, which just softens it all up. Uh, back on to block now normally when I stamp and I'm doing things in my journal I'm using soft browns etc um, decided I'd jazz things up a little bit today and I'm using peat moss again it's my archival ink so it's a permanent ink quick <coughs> sorry quick drying so again oh don't know if you can see that again when I'm inking him up, just straight onto that. Going in little sections so I don't end up with lines through my stamp. And I want this on an angle, so I'm just going to go round about there. Little push, I don't want him too dark. And I don't mind with this one if it comes out a little bit. Uh, it's all come out, but yeah. Um, if it had come out vacant in areas, because I want that sort of look. So this will be sitting up the top of my tag. Now, which is all well and good. This tag covers most of it. But when I take that tag out, I like something sitting in here. So I might put another little butterfly or something down there. Let's have a look what else have I got. On the same sheet, maybe. We might just use him and move him up and down. Sorry, you can't see that far up. All right. So this time I've got my bigger block instead of a small block. So I'm going to actually sit him down still and take my ink pad to him. And I'm just going to do a few going down my page. Once again, finger and thumb. And another one. Now you probably won't even see this one when it's finished, but I know he's there. I'll set that one aside. Right, now that I've got my, my inked background, I've got my brushed corduroy going around. I've got my stamped image in there as well. I'll move you over. What I want to do is distress around my edges. When I distress, it'll lift the edges up, which means that if I want to stamp, it'll have a lip here and not quite go all the way to the edges, which is why I've stamped now and not later. 
Now to distress your edges, there are a couple of different ways. You can get actual edge distresses. Um, I think the most common one these days is a tonic one or Tim Holtz one, which is a little circular one with lots of little blades like so in it. You'll have it for the rest of your life because it'll never ever go blunt because you've got so many blades to work on. Um, it has a holder at one end and then this little circular one with all these different blades in it that are hidden in sections like this. This again is a very, very old one. If you don't have any, you can use your scissors as well. So I'll start with this and then I'll show you how to use your scissors. If you've not distressed before, it's just running him down your paper. So can you see how it starts to lift this edge? Now you can do that as much or as little as you like to the style that you like. If you really dig in, you'll get a beautiful torn look through there as well. I don't want much down the bottom because I'm actually going to pop um, another bit across there, which is a pocket. So we're just going up. If you want to use your scissors, small scissors, open them out. Don't cut yourself. See, you can still use your scissors with it as well. Um, it is a little bit safer, of course, with your edge distresses. No blade to actually cut you. It's not going anywhere near your fingers. But yes, if you don't have anything, don't feel you can't do it because your scissors will still work as well. So, just going to work my way around. Make him as much or as little as you like. Starting up here. Oh, oh very dusty. Yes. Uh, once I've got that, I then like to go back with my walnut stain this time. So I've gone into my darker ink and I touch along the sides, which also then continues to roll that over. But it then highlights all that distressed edge. Go back to your ink pad every now and again. Sorry, my ink pads are out of view because they're sitting up there on some non-slip mat against my mat, which means when I'm wiping, I don't run them all over my table. So unfortunately, they're out of view. But believe me, it is those ones that I'm using. <laughs> um, but because I ink so much with everything, they just drove me dippy because I'd keep going like that and I'd have to hang on to, um, to each one as I did it in this way. I don't have to hang on as I grab some ink with my blending tool. Okay, so you can see why I stamped, especially this one that went from one side to the other, because I've got this actual raised edge now, which would have lifted my stamp off my paper and not allowed me to go all the way to the edge. So it's just a matter of forward thinking when you're doing it. Right, so there is our base. Done. All done. Dusted, etc. So we want to go, no it's not, I lie. I want to put my pocket in here. I want to put my pocket in here. Right. Again, what I want, again, it's a paper pad, but I love all this. Now this has writing across here, but as I plan to put another little pocket in down here, it's not going to concern me too much that this writing is upside down. So I'm going to use my edge, measure the size of my tag, okay, find my ruler, once again use your grid, if you've got a grid use it, it makes things so much easier. Sitting in there, tucking that over for something else. Right, so this is the section I want to use as my pocket. 
is going to sit on here like so. My pocket's going to go from, let's see how tall my tag is. I want my pocket to go from around here to about down, mm, down there. So all I've done is marked where I want it to go. And it means that I can then tear. I can always tear more off if I want. But there's my pocket for my larger tag to go in. If I've marked it, make sure you take off your pencil marks. And now back with my ink so that it all matches in. Now, because this is torn, it makes it a little bit harder sometimes to go around, so I'm actually going to sit him on the flat of my mat so that I don't tear anymore. What it it's doing is actually curling those up beautifully anyway. Now, where I've just inked, I need to wipe that off. Otherwise, any of my white parts will end up beautifully brown. Right. So this is going to be my pocket down here. If I want to continue my theme, even though I'm going to have maybe another little tag down here. I'm thinking I want something on that again as well. So I just want, let's continue with our, our flush of eyes. Let's go with this one, which is this one. And I'm just gonna, and he's actually gonna go off. So I can sit my stamp on there and see how he looks, where exactly I want him. I'm gonna have him on an angle. Remembering that if I put something else here, I'm not gonna see a great deal, but it's just for interest for background sake. So back to my acrylic block. Okay, grab my ink pad. Ink him up. Doesn't matter if I'm straight or square or anything else because I actually wanted this off the page. Give him a little bit of a wander and up. So what I've got now is just a little bit extra going on on that basically plain paper, move you over there, try and remember to put lids back on inks, tuck you over there, this guy, will now adhere to him. I'm going to distress the edges of this one as well, but I'm not going to do it until I'm glued down and then I will distress across all of those and ink them back up in the brown which is why i stopped round about here and not all the way to the edge and didn't do down here so he's just going to be glued on now back to my gluey sheet again i just use the express it in the power tack double check that i've got glue coming out beautiful now i don't want to go too far in on this one because I need every little bit of pocket that I can get. So don't, otherwise my tag for the next one will be trimmed down so far, there won't be much left of it at all. Right, so all we've done is gone round our flat sides. Going on, matching up your corners and down. And straight down like that. If you find 
that it's a little bit thick. Your glue might need a little bit extra oomph and you want to get on with something else. What I quite often do, all I'm doing there is just taking the excess glue that's squeezing out from there. I always have paper clips beside me on the desk. And if I've got areas like this that just wants to sit up, I will pop some paper clips in there while my glue dries. And it holds those sections that might be the most vulnerable that are not going to take and it holds them down while that glue takes. Different glues take longer to just stick everything down and different temperatures. So depending on the temperature of your house, the humidity, etc., 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 um, will depend on how long your glue takes to dry. For the most part, I would then leave that for quite a little while while I then work on my next bit. Now, it's at this point that you need to double check. So here's my cut down tag. You can see that even if I've glued lots down here, he will still fit nicely. If I've glued too much through here, once this tag's all done, I can always trim off at the bottom to give me exactly how much I want going on around here. So he's just going to sit aside to dry. And this time we're going to cover this tag. Now I really like the grunge going through here. So I'm going to stick this guy down like so. So my glow stick, which is still sitting there without a lid. Bad move. So it's not that warm here today. Okay, back across there. And as I said, I wanted this corner. So I'm actually going to go over this way. Down here, match my corners. Yep, just means that something square. Doesn't happen that often. Uh, give him a good push. Lovely. And then I've got all this lovely grunged area down here. Turn him over. Trim him up. As I said, we're just going to use scissors. You saw how I dealt with the sandpaper, but you also saw that it takes longer. So any of my projects I'm working on for myself will usually have a sandpaper technique. Um, anything for tutorials will just be nice and quick and done with the scissors. Move those glue pages over. Right, so here's my tag again now. Once again, going to use my brushed corduroy. And I'm going to semicircle all the way around. Going all the way through. Slightly, and I'm going to distress this one as well. I'm going to pop some butterflies on this one as well, just to give him some interest. Okay, so there's that one. I want to stamp some butterflies. I got lots of butterflies. Let's go for a different butterfly again, and then later on we'll remember where they've all come from and try and find a way to put them all back. Right, so I need my block again. My block, I will at least put that bit on there. They're just sheets of acetate um, that I put in little album ones and I've stamped the cover sheet for each so that I can see exactly what they are is what I'm grabbing from from there. Right, so I'll grab this one, sticking him on my block, inking him up. Grab my stamping mat again. Going around. Oh, 
Oh, peat moss looks very nice on that one. See, sometimes it play, it's, pays to just have a look at some other colours. We all tend to get stuck in a rut and use the same colours each time. There we go. How's that? Uh, maybe one more down in that bottom corner to make it look like it was there originally. There. Now, how easy was that? With a few stamps, the difference that you can make with your papers and all the rest is just amazing. Just going to sit all those over to the side and work on this mess later on. Right, so now I've got my tag done, I will distress my edges again. As I said, you can do it with your scissors, do it with your edge distressers. Straight down, across. And then I will go back, as I do with my other colour, get rid of all the excess. Give him a blow even. It gets very dusty. Try not to do that sort of thing with black clothes on. You'll see why when you do it. Right, and then straight down with my with ornate stone now. Just to prove I am using ornate stone. All right, which then just picks up Again, so my lighter brown has gone further in. My darker brown is just on the edge and it picks up the edge distressing and gives him, you know, a real edge. There's my tag. These guys have been sitting here long enough now. I'll take those ones off. At this point, we want to see... How are we going? How's that? How easy was that? Really? Now, if I want to pop another one down here, like I've done with the others. So with these ones, I've taken these a lot higher so that they're way up here. Each one is completely different. Maybe I just want a little tuck spot going on down with this one instead of this full torn. I can still have my torn look going about it. I know what I didn't do. I didn't double edge that one. So with a piece of scrap, just a piece of scrap copy paper, take my walnut stone. And what I'm doing is just going up to give that that dark. So now you can see where he pops. I distress these ones. Finish off my tag. Now I can give him a blow, go back with my dark in the walnut stain. I'm just going across, rubbing him slightly across, like so. Now, if I wanted that darker again, I could always take my ink pad directly to my tag. So I'm rolling this over and I'm going in a small circular motion. I don't know if you can see that, but it's not flat, flat. There he is like that. This is that piece of scrap again. Going across again. Don't rub it straight down. If I roll him right over, see I get this grunge going, which I've got to admit I use quite a lot as well. But if I just want this edge so it proves you don't need blending tools. If you don't have a blending tool, you can still get that inked effect. 
Okay, so what I'm doing is giving it that extra bit again now. I'm really darkening that up. But I'm going in that circular motion so I don't cut my ink pad too much. Right, find a lid for him. Move you away. Right, so now if I tuck you down here, like so. Just a little tuck spot maybe to make it a double tag. I could finish that there. I could put another, move you down so that you're actually in shot. I could put another pocket in here on this one. I could put one down here. Let's just put just a little bit across there. Now, I can use the papers I've already got that I've been using on this one. Let's have a look. No, here we go. Where's the rest of them? I actually want that. I'm just going to take this one out of here. Now this again is just something that was on that paper pad. But what I want is this section just up here. And I'll do a little tuck. bit larger. Right. So that what I've got going on down here now is this. Now back to my inks. Which for me just finishes it off. Um I love my inks so I can't think of my papers without my inks but stamping be it going around the edges, etc. It is wholly and solely personal choice. Okay. There should be enough ink on that. Yep. So all I'm doing is dabbing against the side of this one. Now I might actually just want that one as like a belly band. So I'm just going to adhere him here and here so that I can tuck in down there. So down with my glue. Let's hope you're still working. Yes, beautiful. All right. Now I don't have anything actually in mind for this one yet, so... I've just probably gone a little bit thicker than I need to. Uh, and straight down there. That's just me. I even it up there, there and there. But again, that's personal preference. I can't help it. A little bit of OCD maybe. All right. All right, so I've made a belly band down through there, which I can then use any of my bits that I've got left over that'll just tuck in. So, all right, he's here now. We'll use him. <laughs> and I think I want, yeah, I like that little bit at the top. So I want to make him into a tag shape. I can just physically grab my scissors and cut and cut. If you're a little bit OCD like me, again, I use my grid. I will sit it on my grid so that I've got a midway point and then I can take it evenly over and over and I'm going halfway between these two grids, halfway between these, which then gives me hmm, a pair of scissors. Here we go. Found them. Problem solved. Right. 
and then I'm just going to go straight from one to the other. Take my pencil marks off. Now I know this guy is too long for what I want. I'm just going to tear him across and he's going to sit in here like so. So back with my inks. See how this all picks up with where I've got the white showing of the core colour of the cardstock. That's just me. I love that. Right. So there's my brushed corduroy. Back into my darker one, which is my walnut stain. Just so that it all ties in together. Into this bit. Right, so there's my tag, which will now sit in here like so. We've been going with the butterflies. Let's continue with the butterflies. Um, maybe even if we go with that full one that we had before, which could be still sitting out somewhere, or, yes it is, there it is. Right, with our full one that we used before, But up like so. So this time I'm capturing a little bit more of the words and a little bit less of the other two butterflies. So I'm going somewhere in that centre bit. I know it's somewhere around there for a very small tag, but right, sitting him there. And like that, how's that? A little push, a little bit of a rock. There we go. So what we've done is used that stamp in numerous different ways and just picked out different parts of it to give us different versions each time. So just because it's a stamp doesn't mean it needs to be used in the one form each time. Find stamps, it's a great way to start. You don't have to go and buy squillions of stamps. Look at something that is so variable that you know I've got the picture of what the stamp actually is that's what this stamp is so I've got if I'm doing a flower themed one I've got flowers I've got wording I've got butterflies ledges in here something like this and there's lots of different stamps around that give you different versions so just because they're a bigger stamp don't get scared off with them because look at them as how many different times you can use them. They're a great value for money that way. All right, stop waffling, Kylie. Back in, tuck our little belly band in, and there we have him. Uh, let's have a look. Still want a little bit more of my tag. Now again, all these, all these came out of this paper pad. Um, these were just on a sheet from the paper pad and I spent yesterday afternoon doing something else and cutting these guys out. So let's have a look. Yeah. So when I cut them out, even the ones that were right on the edge of the paper, I've still left and cut out because they're ones that I can stick in here. So it's just a matter I've got a couple of different ones like that. So let's utilize those on the edge of my, and it's just given that a little bit extra as well. So we might just stick those guys down. That was, how hard was that? Um, let's find this one. Now with these ones as well, they have an embossed finish to them. So can you see that they're shiny, which means my distress inks are not going to take to them. Um, they won't like them at all. I want to go between those butterflies. So hence why I'm not inking around them. There's one. 
you'll find your distress inks will just wipe off and never really permanently adhere onto your shiny cardstocks. And stick you in there. How's that? How hard was that? Right. Oh, and I didn't put any ribbon over here on my table. Let's have a look and see what I've got. Oh, got some of that. So, I'll just move all my other bits because deep down in the recesses over here. Right. I have some paper twine, which is what I've used on my black one as well. Cut a little bit of that. Now, with these, I could have this, if this was in a journal, um, in a moment, we'll find my journal. There it is. Current one I'm working on. Right. So, with something like this, I could either adhere that fully to a page and then I've got my tags to pull out to journal on so that I've got all these wonderful journaling spots. Or I could use this whole thing and put it actually in a tuck, which then gives me one, two, and three journaling spots. Okay? Oh, very dirty. So it's just a matter of how you utilise something like this for your journals, depending on what it is that you're after. Okay? All right. So we'll put this. So what I'm going to do with this one, whereas my others have all been done so that this bit adheres to my journals, this time I might make it so that it's the full thing can all go in a tuck pocket, which means I'm going to put something on this bit. Now, this is just a paper twine. Mm, had it for years. Don't know if you can still get it anymore. And if you're gentle, which I'm obviously not today, you can just undo him a little bit. And what it'll give you is this. Now, with the white one, I can ink over him again, which will then give me my colour. So, I want to put a little bit of colour in this because I don't want um, that stark white. Okay, there he is. There he is. So, just with my, and I'm just using what was left on my brushed corduroy. Both sides. So I'm just giving him a bit of colour. Um, so you can see now, he's got just a little bit of colour to him. Just a little bit of dirt, I suppose, to him. That way you can see it better if I'm doing it that way. How's that? Yep, right. So, uh, scrunch him back up again because I want to thread him through a hole. I'll pop a hole in my back one. Uh, I know, too small. Mid, just right. I feel like Goldilocks and three bears. Uh, straight down. I don't want to go too far down. I don't want to go into my stamped image. And I don't want to go too far down that I've got too much sitting in there. Lots of different ways you can do these ones. Sit him up. Um, this one I've just bent it over and used stamps. Used stamps. 
use staples. Um, that one, of course, is just the normal little, you know, thread him through and wind him into the other one. This one, just for different sakes, we might just tie a knot. I do reckon. So that what I've got is it's hanging down. And then I can just thread him out like so. So that with this one, how's that? There we go. So, three different tags for our journals, either to be used two tags or three journaling tags, depending on how you adhere them to your journals. I, hoped, I hope you've got a little bit from this. I hope you've had fun watching it. Um, please join me again. Don't forget to hit like, like and subscribe. And until next time, have a great crafting experience. Bye.